Dear Daniela, I learned today that Coloradans are the second most likely group of Americans to move to New Zealand, just after California. With the magnificent Rocky Mountains, some of the best craft beer in the world, and being the fittest state in the USA, why are Coloradans seeking out a country over 7,000 miles away, requiring a minimum 15-hour plane ride just to see family? Why would anyone move from one of the sunniest states in the USA to a country where the last time its biggest city had a solid week of sunshine was eight months ago? In fact, it's understanding the answer to this question that has helped me realize why my time in Colorado was vital to my decision to make New Zealand my permanent home. I remember driving to the Rocky Mountains for the first time. I was genuinely awestruck. I couldn't believe that something so magnificent would exist in my own backyard, that every day I would have the opportunity to explore, go camping, go hiking, tubing, kayaking, whatever my heart desired in one of nature's most incredible playgrounds. So I remember when I first moved to Colorado, I was going into a grocery store and it cracked me up that like all the chicks were wearing like yoga pants and sports clothes and stuff like that. And it turns out that that's like a huge part of Colorado culture is like just being outdoors and being like ready for a hike at any point in time. I loved that every hike in the Rocky Mountains was such an adventure because I was so unfamiliar with the climate and topography. My uh, unacclimated New Zealand self is um, feeling the Colorado elevation. Whew. It only took one hike in the mountains for me to realize I would need more water on my hikes. I kept a close eye out for moose after learning they are more dangerous than bears and wolves combined. I learned to slow down and pace myself to allow my lungs to adjust as I gained elevation. Okay, so I don't know if you remember this, but I had just come back from New Zealand. I don't think I had visited in like three years. I think it might have been last year or the year before. Okay. But um, you took me up the Manuco Rail Trail. Do you remember that? Oh, Manitou Springs. Yeah, that. no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, incline. I hadn't been in Colorado forever, so I had lost my acclimation to the elevation. So Chica runs up to the top, and I have to show you guys pictures of this. This place is crazy. Yeah, like railroad ties, like to the point near the top where you sort of have to climb them. Yeah, so she ran to the top of the mountain. I think there's probably got like 2,000 feet elevation mm -hmm. here. And she ran up, ran down, kept up, catch up with me, and then ran up again. I was like, you mother effer. <laughs> The Rocky Mountains had me spellbound, igniting my passion for the great outdoors. This is when I truly embraced the power of nature, setting me on a path of a regular adventure. Every hike, every trail was a step towards my adventurous destiny. places to visit, yeah. definitely Red Rocks. Yeah, Red Rocks. Tons awesome. of trails around there, and it's my favorite sort of like deserty mountain um, climate or landscape. And then there's really good hikes outside of Vail, definitely yeah. more like high alpine. Um, love those, and there's just water everywhere. And then I'd say Waterton Canyon, which is down south. I've never heard of that. Southwest Denver. Um, Bighorn sheep, like you could practically reach out and touch. Um, it's great for fly fishing, huge wide river, it's beautiful. And one thing that's really cool about Colorado is it's pretty much something for everyone. Like there's like river rafting, kayaking, rock climbing, hiking, camping, tramping, pretty much everything. So lots of variety. Dude, Colorado's the best, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm not leaving. The first time I did a solo hike, I went somewhere I'd been before where I knew what to expect. The familiarity of the terrain counteracted the anxiety I felt being vulnerable and alone. I did it on a whim without much forethought or planning, subconsciously keeping myself progressing by not acknowledging the dangers. I found it less overwhelming to believe in my resourcefulness to deal with whatever came my way than to confront all of the possible scenarios in advance. The hike provided me with a sense of serenity that I could only replicate when I was alone in nature. As I floated on my back in a small pond, watching the trees above me gently flow with the wind, I felt as if my surroundings and myself were one.
So it was actually right around here that I did my first, I think, big night hike. I went to Conundrum Hot Springs, which is nine miles, about 15 kilometers, one direction, and you have to carry everything with you. And I had this giant backpack. And it's really funny because some of the people that were coming down the mountain, they're like, there's this bear that's like chilling in the hot springs at the top of the mountain. So like, I'm hiking up the mountain, hiking up the mountain, I'm like, well, do I keep going? Because will the bear leave? Like, will I get to enjoy the hot springs? But I just remember it being one of those like really impactful hikes that like, you know, inspire you and make you wanna keep hiking and doing cool things. How can you not be out in this and like become inspired? Like, this is freaking amazing. I love this. Over time, I dared to hike alone more and more often, expanding my boundaries. It takes a special skill to hike up a mountain with a tripod in one hand and a phone in the other. <laughs> As my confidence grew, the distance between me and dreams I had previously thought inaccessible decreased, and soon I was wondering if there was more to explore beyond the mountains. While living here in Colorado, I started making a huge effort to like start to understand how to be safe outdoors, especially in a backpacking setting because I just, I loved staying overnight. I loved the thrill of like, you know, hearing wild, wild animals around your tent or, um, I don't know, just like random sounds as you're sleeping, like that, that thrilled me. So I wanted to like learn how to do that, do dangerous things safely. So here's where things got interesting. I got this random opportunity to move to New Zealand just on the fly. And uh, yeah, it was just so out of the blue. I did not expect that at all. And turns out I had studied New Zealand as a child. So I knew a lot about New Zealand. I was super excited to go there. I was also scared about going to New Zealand too. It wasn't just all excitement. Like I had developed a friend group for the first time in forever because I've been moving around so much. And I love the Rocky Mountains. They were freaking amazing. And I just, I felt comfortable here. It was a very nice place to be in. The beer was very good and I was drinking at the time. By the way, still quitting in August. Angela had to work unfortunately, but uh, yeah, don't worry. She's coming back. We're going to Hot Springs later. Despite my fears, I felt this yearning in me to go overseas again, and the fact that I already knew so much about New Zealand felt like destiny. Soon, I was daydreaming of how there'd be no place further than 75 miles from a beach, over 3,000 kilometers of hiking trails, and more than 14,000 kilometers of coastline, offering a range of outdoor activities even beyond what the Rocky Mountains could provide. The fact that almost nothing could kill you and almost 80% of the country's native wildlife isn't found anywhere else in the world felt like every outdoor encounter would be an extraordinary experience. That side of the world had always seemed like another untouchable reality. And suddenly, the land I had once dreamed of would become my reality. So I was both very, very nervous and very, very excited. But to be honest, the joy overtook me and I got into basically planning mode and started doing a bunch of logistics. First, when I moved to New Zealand, I did what you should do if you move to a new country, which is try to make friends as fast as possible because it's going to be very, very lonely. So I joined clubs, I joined volunteer activities, I did all sorts of hiking trails. And honestly, I was having a great time because New Zealand's freaking amazing. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. In my first year of living in New Zealand, I traveled to the most northern tip of New Zealand and the country's longest beach. I walked through a cowrie forest that left you feeling like you were in Lord of the Rings. I biked four days across the most beautiful countryside on the Haraki Rail Trail. I saw glowworms in more places than I ever expected, and saw divers playing with seals and dolphins in the Bay of Islands. I was enchanted. This country seemed unreal. 
but it quickly became clear how to be safe in New Zealand. It didn't take a long adjustment period from Colorado, which everything can kill you, to New Zealand, which pretty much nothing can kill you. I did what most people do, which is I went to work, I got a little bored and started looking around for fun things to do and ran across the idea of sailing. I'd never sailed before and turns out you can do it for free in most places. Just go to your local, local yacht club and ask them if they have any people looking for crew during some races. It's gonna be miserable the first couple of times, but you'll catch on. Learning to sail was exactly the challenge I needed. The first time I sailed, I held on for my life as I was assigned to be the hiker to keep the boat upright. I lowered my head way more than needed as the boom swung across during attack. My fingers quickly became sore as I hanked on new sails. And the helm! Oh my, the helm! My entire body shook with fear as the captain quickly reached over to correct my oversteering in an accidental jibe. I had no idea what I was doing, and it was for that reason alone that I loved it. So I fell in love with sailing. It became the best thing ever. Um, I love sailing almost as much as I like hot springs. Angela, where are we? Strawberry hot springs in Steamboat Springs. Is it as amazing as I told you it would be? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Is it better than you told you it would be? Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, 20 bucks. It's a little hard to get to, would you say? It's, yeah, difficult to get to, but it's worth it. Yeah, definitely. And it might not stay this way forever because when I was here, it was way less built up than this. And you can stay at some huts at the top. I like sitting over here and um, yeah. leaning over the edge. Sure. You're not supposed to be in hot water for more than like 45 yeah. minutes, right? Mm, this is so peaceful. So Danielle, is sailing the same as being in the mountains? Or how are they different? It's funny because a lot of mountainers end up being sailors. And I think it's because they require the same like um, do it attitude and like the understanding risk and how to like do dangerous things safely, which is one of my favorite settings, by the way, dangerous things safely. Um, but yeah, no, I think that they're very similar in that way. And of course, one's on the water, one's on land. I mean, they're both a lot of work, two different muscles. I'm gonna do it, ready? One, two, three. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Which is basically your shoulders. <laughs> okay. <I know. laughs> Angela, I'm sad to go home. Look at your fabulous self. Loving to sail was like a huge surprise to me. Like I'd always imagined myself as a mountain person, but I think I realized that I'm more of like an adventure person and living in New Zealand ended up being perfect for that because there's so many opportunities there to like go out into the ocean or like it's the, one of the closest places to go to Antarctica if I ever decide to do that, who knows, you know? And I could sail around New Zealand and it just felt like Colorado led me there. Colorado had led me to that place where like I found what I was made for. I found what, you know, what my purpose was in life. In the end, moving to New Zealand unlocked a journey I never could have imagined. It's a land where adventure lives both in the mountains and across the seas. I learned that Coloradans and Kiwis have way more in common than we think. And if your heart desires endless exploration, adventure knows no bounds in New Zealand. For the first time since I was 12 years old, my heart has finally found a home. Unfortunately, it's time to head home, um, back to New Zealand. It's both sad and happy. I love Colorado, but I'm really looking forward to New Zealand, and I'm really looking forward to getting on the sailboat. Yeah, we'll see you out in New Zealand, right? Hell yeah. Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs>